Thanks. Right. Oh, really? Interesting. So I do have a question though, Lynn. We weren't, Shalini, were we planning on recording or not? You should. Oh. We yes. often have people ask for a recording. Okay. Hi, welcome to our recording. Okay, so I'm allowing people in. Okay. Oh. So I'll start Hello. letting people in. Yes. Adrian Tarazi will promote. <laughs> yes. Alice Swift will promote. Bernie Kubiak will promote. Bonnie Isman will promote. Uh, Eric um, John Hornick. Erica. So uh, for the attendees, we are slowly letting you in to be panelists so that we can see and hear each other. So FYI, that's what's happening. <laughs> Probably should have warned you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, welcome. I just realized I was like, we're going to pull you through space and time. Hi, Alice. Hey, Sherry Wilson. Hi, John. Hi, Bernie. Hi, hey, Andy. Andrew. Andrew, I said. Wow. Andrew. I never called you Andrew. We're being very formal this evening. I know, Andrew. <laughs> so welcome, sir. <laughs> it was a long time from when we got the announcement until tonight without a reminder unless although i haven't i've been missing some emails recently so maybe there was a reminder erica but, you have your hand up i'm trying to promote you we're still figuring out our communication lines alice so we'll check that and make sure that we well um, i i did receive uh because anyone who signed up as a panelist got a reminder today so uh, Alice, what, does, what, what, what do you mean signed up as a panelist? Um, so anyone who signed, anyone, sorry, any, not panelists. Anyone who signed up for the Zoom meeting. When okay. did you sign up, Alice? I the, forgot until this evening. <laughs> yeah, so I know we're trying a new format. So we'll, um, we can take some time afterwards to get feedback on this new format. Hi, everybody. Welcome. And we'd love for everyone to come Hi, in as a panelist and you can leave your video off if you don't want to be seen for any reason. But we do invite you to come in um, and join us. Yep. If, and so you can keep your video off and you won't be recorded either, um, unless you speak, of course. Hi. Hi, Mindy. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, Mindy. Thank you. I'm having trouble promoting two people, and it may be because they need to update their Zoom link. I don't know. Maybe. I feel like I saw Vasya on a webinar earlier today, though. Right. Thank you for <laughs> joining us after you. Uh, hi, everybody. Okay. Nice. There we go. Oh, I got one in. Okay. All right. Thank you try, Maria. Hanging. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for joining. Maria we'll get started Dami. in a moment. All right. So, as we're going, just so you know, the Q and A is open. Um, folks, hi. Look at all these faces. This is great. I'm so excited. <laughs> And we will, Shalini, do you, are you, do you want to kick things off or do you want me to? What do you want sure. to Sure. Uh, well, welcome everyone. I am so excited to be here with Anna, who is the other co-counselor from District 5. And uh, this is our first District 5 meeting. It was a little chaotic. We're still trying to figure out our different committees that we are in and how to coordinate the timing and all of that. So I apologize, we apologize for this being last minute, but we will be sharing a schedule uh, up till July at least of all the possible meetings. And if anyone is not on our newsletters, please let us know so we can, um, uh, we did send newsletters out and if you didn't get one, then let us know and we can add you to that. We have an interesting agenda, but we're also here, this is a great opportunity for us to just talk with each other to be a, you know it's not as formal as in a town council meeting so feel free to raise your hand um if you have any questions we do have an agenda but most importantly we want to hear from you so we invite you to use the q a option does everyone see the q a at the bottom 
anyone not see it. So there's a Q&A um, button below and you could use that to start sharing any questions, thoughts, ideas um, that you may have. And that way we have a sense of how much time we should keep later on to um, for answering questions. And I see Erica has a hand up. Yeah, Erica. Thanks, Shalini. I'm glad to be here. I, I just, I'm not able to type a question into the q and I can see it, uh -huh. but I can't participate in it. Oh. And I'm, I, may, I may be the only one who's having this problem. Maybe someone can educate me. You'd think I'd know my way around Zoom by now. No, actually, you know, technology has its own mind sometimes. So uh, let's see, allow, maybe we have to allow something. I, yeah, I just changed the settings of it. Maybe, I don't know if that'll help. Erica, could you try again? Still nothing? Hmm, okay. Lynn, any guidance? Have you used the Q&A before? I have not, and so I'm not going to be much help okay, here. Attendees can comment. Attendees can... Oh, I think so people can just raise their hand and ask questions. Okay. Yeah, I think that that's probably good. All right. So I'm going to start. We do have a little bit of a slide deck, and we'll be joined later by um, Kathy Shane, who I'm now realizing I didn't spell check when I wrote her name in my slide deck, so hopefully that doesn't <laughs> go poorly for me. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to our first District 5 meeting. Uh, many of you may have been with Shalini last term and I'm so excited to be here as the other District 5 rep um, with you today. So to give you an idea of what we are gonna cover today, um, we're gonna welcome, you've been welcomed. Um, we'll do some quick introductions. We're gonna talk through our committee placements and our roles on the council. We're going to go over the council priority areas that stemmed from the retreat. We'll talk over, talk through quickly what's going on in town. So we're covering the uh, CREST program and other CSWG recommendations, the elementary school building project, updates on Hickory Ridge, uh, some current and upcoming votes that the council will have. And then we're gonna go over ways to engage with us and with the town. Um, I'm looking at this group. I know this is a pretty engaged group, mm -hmm. but just in case you want more, uh, more ways to get involved. And uh, then we'll we'll keep it open for questions and comments at the end. I, that's at the end, but please know that this is truly interrupt. At, I mean, I'm going to say this for me, but I think Shalini feels the same way. Please, you know, interrupt at any point with questions. Either raise your hand, or if we don't see you, just uh, you can unmute and start talking at us, and we will we'll listen. We're also joined by our council president, Lynn uh, Griesmer, who's here, and uh, one of our at-large counselors, Andy, as well as our state rep and District 5 resident, Mindy. Uh, we, we're happy that she's from District 5, so. All right. Shalini, do you wanna talk through your committee assignments first? We have one shared and then Shalini has a separate one. Sure, so um, I'm part of the Town Services and Outreach Committee and the CRC Committee. Um, so what are we talking about in this? Are we showing uh, what we're doing or? Well, maybe why did you want to be on those? I'll interview. Mm. Why yeah, you that's great. Let's make it interactive. Okay, awesome. <laughs> what are you excited to do on them? Yeah, so the TSO, I was particularly interested because something that I started actually that came out of uh, affordable, uh, our house comprehensive housing plan last time was the community outreach piece was missing. And John Hornick, who's here, is the chair of the Affordable Housing Trust. Thank you for bringing that to our attention last time. And uh, that got me really thinking about we're, you know, we're really not doing a good enough job. Not everyone knows what's happening. So I started uh, building out a community engagement plan, which, uh, and so that's going to be one of the things that I'm really going to be focusing on is how do we engage residents and not all of you, just you residents, thank you all so much for staying engaged, but there are a lot of people who really don't know what's happening in our town council, in the town, and the decisions impact them, and we never hear from them. So how can we create ways to uh, systematically be able to hear more and more voices? It's really, really hard. We've tried different things, and it is really hard. So we're, again, coming to you. If you have ideas, if you feel your neighbors don't know about the district meetings, that's a starter you know, definitely let them know. But anyway, so creating a systematic plan for how to let people know about the different projects that the town council is working on 
at different phases, what are the different ways you can be involved, uh, different channels of communication. So that's something, as you can see, I'm really passionate about. Um, the other thing is we have a very uh, a comprehensive um, envir uh, environmental and climate action committee uh, proposed a plan. So I'm very interested in seeing how we can start implementing that in the TSO and the CRC, like what zoning changes need to happen or how does that impact how we use our streets or so starting to see and invite the ECAC committee more. And we have Vasu here who's in the VC uh, in the ECAC committee. Thank you, Vasu, for doing your work, uh, doing amazing work. So, so like really looking at things from the, the climate action angle in TSO and CRC, um, there's some big things that are coming up in TSO, like the municipal parking district. Uh, I can just go on and on. And then CRC, um, let's see, a big one is the comprehensive housing uh, policy. There are great ideas, like we adopted that, but there, we now have to figure out how to start implementing that. And, uh, and you know, again, all of these issues are so interconnected the zoning with the housing with the climate action goals with the social justice and equity goals so how do we do this in a thoughtful way um, seeing the interconnectedness of all of those things um last thing that i'm interested in is the economic development piece like we have all these rev um, expenses the capital projects that are coming up and we also need to figure out how can we raise uh, more revenue in a way that is consistent with the values, our historic, our natural resources, um, and our colleges and institutions that are here. How do we work with everyone, the bid, the downtown, um, and how do we work in a way that we can revitalize our downtown, invite more uh, artists and um, businesses, startups, and so forth. So those are some of the things that I'm passionate about. So on the council, I am the council vice president. And so I work closely with Lynn to um, support the support her in general, but also to set the agenda to think about how we um, are pacing the work that we're doing. And I can tell you that that is a, a very mathematical process of, of fitting everything in. I've been surprised at that. Um, and then I am also on the town services and outreach committee. And so this one was appealing to me for very similar reasons to Shalini. You know, I, uh, I would love to see, this is an amazing turnout and I'm really happy with it. And I'd love to see 40 people here, 50 people here, right? So I think that there's a lot we can do around outreach and awareness on um, just what council does, how to be engaged, how to be involved. Um, in terms of the, the part that surprised me about TSO is how much I really enjoy and, and I knew I cared about, but how much I really enjoy the town services component of it. Um, I also have been coming at this from the climate action angle and um, am really, really excited about the ways that we can work with our town services to, um, to, to meet our climate goals and to continue to uh, continue to take action in that way. So um, in addition to that, there's also things like walkable, bikeable streets, right, um, and, and uh, other programs that the town puts forward more kind of when you think about like the day to day, that's sort of the functioning that's very much under the town manager and the town services and outreach committees plays that support role to that. That's my very rough outline. I'm looking at Andy and Lynn, who I'm sure both would like to uh, correct me on, on what I say, but that's my very big picture view of it, uh, of TSO. So. Um, Again, interrupt us if at any point you have questions. So the council had a retreat, um, gosh, a few weeks ago, was it now? Uh, and we, um, I was going to put our, our slightly confusing matrix up here, but we, what we did was we identified some areas that folks really wanted to work on in the next term. And so they are tied to the town manager goals, but I wanted to just show these to you as an indication of where we may, the directions that we plan on going. I'll also read them because I know those a lot, I did kind of have to squish them. So climate, act, and they, these are not in any particular order, just to be clear. So climate action and sustainability, economic vitality and economic development, parking, walking, biking routes, I squished two together there, uh, zoning and design guidelines, the major capital projects, housing and affordability, racial equity and social justice, administration, leadership and personnel, and then finance and sound financial decisions. 
So I know Shalini and I had a couple shared, a couple different. Um, I know that we had shared the climate action and sustainability. Shalini, I believe you had economic vitality. And, and again, this doesn't mean we don't care about all of these other things. It just meant this is the, very much the priority areas for each of us. Um, Shalini had the economic vitality, economic development. I had the parking, walking, biking routes. Um, and then I, I think we both also had housing and affordability potentially as well as racial equity. I had racial equity and um, social justice on mine and I'm not quite remembering Shalini what you had so I don't wanna misrepresent. Wait, I think I added the community engagement uh, piece again that um, in order to have more equity, in order to have um, make better decisions for everyone, I think it's really important that while we're acting and continuing to work on important decisions, we keep working on improving our community engagement. Yeah. So, um, so within these priority areas, these are obviously not pieces of legislation, right? So we'll each be working on figuring out what does this mean in terms of policies that we can bring forward or uh, things that we need to move on in the coming, uh, coming term. And can I just add one thing to that? I think one of the things that we're also discussing is, or at least I'm very interested in us discussing is how do we prioritize our priorities? Because they're all of these and so, uh, and you know, we all have a certain interest and they're all, all of these are really important, right? And within each of these, there's so many different items that we're working on. So one of the things that I propose in TSO and then uh, in CRC is like, if we take all the different items that we're working on and start plotting it in a matrix based on which goals are these priorities um, reaching. So if you find that one priority, like let's say, um, uh, housing, uh, affordable housing, if it's uh, changing the zoning for more density. I'm not saying we're doing that, okay? I don't wanna freak anyone out. But I'm just taking an example of housing and we change the zoning to allow more density around downtown area, for example. That's, let's say, meeting our housing goal. It's meeting our um, environmental goals because people will walk more or whatever. And then there is, um, so it's if one action is hitting several goals of ours, then it gives us something to discuss and talk about as a, as a council, at least having shared criteria of how we're making our decisions and why we're making them. So that's something that I'm hoping that we will this time around, because last time we, I feel like we didn't really have a very clear set of criteria. How are we prioritizing our goals and how are we making these decisions? Awesome. Okay. Um, so I know Kathy is with us in the audience. Kathy, I tried to promote you and it said you didn't want to be promoted. So I'm um, happy to try again if you'd like to be promoted to panelists to give us an update, but we're going to move into our, um, I'll share my screen again. I just wanted everyone to be able to see all of your lovely faces. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So talking through what's going on around town, updates on major projects and initiatives. And so we are excited to be joined. Hi, Kathy by Kathy Shane. I know I spelled it wrong. I'm gonna just just, just stop sharing yeah, just, my screen. Yeah, just, just I hate when I spell things wrong. <laughs> um, sorry. So uh, Kathy is the chair of our elementary school building project committee, building committee project, um, and has some, has some things to share with us about the status of that and maybe some ways to engage. Kathy. Hi, I'm glad to join you and I am going to be really brief and then take any questions and one of the things I want to let everybody know I've got a few charts to show is that uh, next Monday night. Um, between 530 and 630 the Council is going to be getting an update on the elementary school building project. And so if you want to learn more and hear the back and forth, the discussion, there won't be any public comment during that, but it's a special one hour uh, session before the regular council meeting and there will be materials posted there. So um, I am going to try to just give you a bird's eye view of where we are in an incredibly exciting project that I have the privilege, the honor, and with it comes a lot of hard work um, of bringing a new elementary school to Amherst. Um, what we're working on right now is the what is called the preliminary design phase. And we are part of a process that um, is governed by a larger 
entity called the Massachusetts Skill Building, School Building Authority. And they are a granting authority that helps schools pay for new schools, uh, in, in this case, a new elementary school. And we go through a series of phases. And I am going to, if you let me, I think, show the screen. Um, let me just start it from the slideshow. Um, can everyone see the screen right now? Yeah. So, so I'm just going to try to give you this bird's eye view of how this is working right now, because we are at the beginning of a phase and it's called a preliminary design phase. One of the things if people have been watching what the schools have been doing is there's been a decision to move the sixth grade up to the middle school. So we are talking about a school that will serve kindergarten through fifth grade and it will consolidate Wildwood and Fort River to one school. There has not been a choice of where the school will be. So that's part of this preliminary design stage, which, which location, but it will be grades K through five. And as I mentioned, the Massachusetts School Building Authority has a series of steps we have to go through. We have a fantastic design team, Denisco Design, and if you've been able to tune in to any of the sessions they've held, they've had some community forums, some visioning sessions. Um, I feel like they are really um, both willing and available to us to reach out to the community as we go through this process and explain clearly and go back um, as needed. So we're at this arrow down the middle. We're at the, what I said, beginning. We've chosen our designer. We've got an owner project manager working with us and we're hard at work a preliminary design program. And what this means is that the school committee, which is a partner with the building committee is looking at the education program of the school and saying, given what we wanna teach, what kind of space needs do we have? What programs do we have? We have a dual language program called Comenantes. How much space does that need? We have district-wide special needs programs. How much space do they need? We have this many children. How many grade school classrooms do we need? And that drives the overall size of the building, the education program. So we are at the point we're hoping by the middle of March, which is just a few weeks away that the school committee will sign off on a final education plan, which will determine the size and where the classrooms are. And the building committee will um, frame the choices working with the designer. We're not gonna make decisions right now. We're talking about four possible alternatives with lots of variations in those. Will we be building a building at the Wildwood site or Fort River? Is it gonna be an all new school? Is it gonna use some of the old with total renovation with an addition? Those decisions will not be made until later this year. There will be, um, and to the extent you wanna hear more about the detail of this, there'll be a community forum. This will be the second of them on March 9th, and it will most likely be at 6.30. And at that point, the education program will have been signed off of, which will dictate the size of the building and the comparison of choices. Um, our design team has been out there digging the dirt. Um, we're going to be building a net zero building, which means all electric. And we're talking about potential geothermal solar panels to offset the energy costs. So they're looking at the two sites with a, which might be better for those. What's the traffic look like on the sites? Um, where the, can they locate the school, whether it's ad or new? so that the sun and the daylight streams into the school in the best way to be using the natural energy of the sun. So all of that is going into this evaluation of the four alternatives. We don't have to make a decision until June. Well, this is our own schedule. We've imposed it. We're gonna be coming up with votes on the educational program and the building committee with the comparisons in March. Then we're hoping to go from choices to one choice, a preferred choice. Where are we gonna build the building? What's it gonna look like? With some very preliminary design. This is a very a creative team that's starting to say, where will the gym be? Where will the library be? Where will the cafeteria be? Where will the classrooms be? As we think of um, the school. 
and going to the future. So this is the, the sh bird's eye view of where we're going. And I'm going to stop cream sherry so I can, I um, was asked to hold this to five plus minutes. So hopefully I've stayed within my, my time slot for your meeting. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that is, you know, there's a, a longer version of what I just showed you. And um, on Monday night, one of the things that's extremely exciting, because until now I've been in this abstract world of what's a preliminary design, we're starting to get um, what it would it look like if it was a two-story or three-story building. The design team is starting to say, here are the classrooms, where might they be located? So it's starting to feel like a building and a school to me. Um, we're hoping if we can move forward this by the end of the year, we would be bringing this to the council and then we're going to be bringing it to the voters for support for the financing of it. And the best guess is 2026, we'll have a new school that children can enter. So that's the big picture timeline. Does anyone have questions? questions. questions. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Shalini, go ahead. Yeah, no, same thing. Any questions? <laughs> yeah, Nancy. Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hello, <clears throat> Kathy. This is kind of a question that comes up way in the background, but where are we in terms of population projections for elementary school kids? Um, well, with Crocker, you know, I've been since the sixth grade moving up, we are at 575 in this combined school and there's another 300. So we're at in the 800-ish numbers. And um, I can get you, I'm, I should have come prepared with answers like that. But when, when you work with MSBA, they're doing their best to look into the future with us to say, you know, they don't want to build a school that's too small, but they don't want to build a school that's too big. So that estimate of 575 kids, maybe we'll have 600 kids in this school, but they're allowing some room for growth. So one of the reasons we can move the sixth grade up to the elementary school behind Nancy's question is we, we have had a decline in enrollment and there's plenty of space in the middle school for the sixth grade to move up. Um, and it makes for a kind of healthy mix to have three grades there to share art and music and language. So um, the projection is not rapid growth, but about steady state rather than the loss we've seen over the last several years. Okay, thanks, Kathy. And just so my my children are are in their 40s and late 30s, this is down a good 200 to 300 children compared to when they were in school. I mean, this is we're we're talking about a decrease, which is why we're looking at consolidating to schools. John, um, Kathy, to what extent, if at all, does the school building committee take into account? the Pelham Elementary School, which really has, well, it would have a lot of empty space, except they choice in about 50% of the students who currently attend the school. That's a great question, John. It's not explicitly on the, the radar screen, but as I said, when the overall picture of how many children we, do we have, um, Pelham is sitting there, as, as John has said, it, there are some people who live on that side of town who choose to go to the Pelham school. So we have to have, suppose they decide to come back into Amherst, but Pelham is right now not part of the uh, school group that we're looking at. We're really looking at Crocker and our own schools, but it's a great question because Pelham is sitting with capacity and Amherst kids are in some of those seats right now. Um, so I don't have a good answer for you other than it's not one of the pieces, certainly the building committee, it's not part of our scope to be looking at uh, where does Pelham sit in all of this. The larger town is looking at it, but we are not. Thanks, Vasu. Hey, Kathy, very excited with this project. So uh, thank you for all the work that you've done. Um, so I just want to, you know, I, I lead the, well, I'm part of the Energy and Climate Change Committee, and uh, I would really like to see or have you present, you know, whatever ideas that come up at this, uh, at, at your meeting around how you're going to build a net zero building, because I believe it is the first net zero building in Amherst. So be super excited and curious to learn a lot more from it. 
Um, and then my other question is around uh, the materials used for building uh, this uh, the school. Will it be made from net zero uh, or reduced carbon footprint material, or is it going to be using regular material? Have you considered transportation cost and the associated carbon emissions because of that? Is that part of the consideration as well? Well, you just moved into a sphere that I can't give you a good answer, but I can give you a, a good beginning answer. Um, that we actually have a net zero subcommittee of the building committee. And that's four people on the building committee, but we've also welcomed town people who have knowledge to be Amherst residents to come in. And that um, there, if you go on the website for the elementary school building committee in the town website, that subcommittee has had some very interesting postings for so those who you want to really look at the technical details and talking about how do we get to a net zero building, how much of it is the building envelope, what we build around the building, uh, what systems we put to heat and cool the building, what we what we use for daylight, and then how we use the building so you don't leave the lights on all day long and you have lights coming off and on. And there's been a couple excellent presentations. In terms of the specifics on building costs, the other thing, if you want to um, send me an email, there's been an amazing report put out by the Department of Energy working with a larger group that came out in December called Elementary School, Net Zero Elementary Schools. And they've profiled many across the country. And then they've done a kind of, it's not quite a how to do it manual, but they said, how did these schools do what technically? So in terms of the materials that go in the building, our designer has built a building like this, several, as, as, as has other in Massachusetts. So we're going to be looking at that. But I think the focus is more on how we're heating, cooling, and offsetting the electrical costs than specific, you know, what will the walls be made out and the floors be made of? But they're well aware of these issues. So I can't go much more into that, but I welcome you to this meeting. You know, it's probably going to be meeting about once a month, but they've been very good at if people raise issues later on coming back to give a better idea of, of what's being thought of for the building. Right now, they are looking at geothermal and looking at the two sites. Could we have geothermal wells and doing an analysis it's expensive up front, but lifetime it's worth doing. So I don't know where that will, that's a choice that we will be making as a town. Thank you. And Adrian. Yes, uh, thank you. I was trying to put my question into the chat, but um, the chat didn't seem to be working. So I don't know if you want to take this up, Kathy. And I realize this is uh, regarding the elementary school building. Appreciated your summary there. Uh, as a District 5 resident, um, perhaps I'm asking this question outside of your purview, but we've got Crocker Farm School here and we know there will be several ramifications. Can you or anyone else speak to Crocker Farm and the issues for Crocker as we go into the new elementary school building era and what that means for our children down here? Um, I can speak real quickly to it, Adrian, because again, we are focused on uh, the two other schools, but Crocker is part of a whole system. Um, so with the district-wide special needs programs, one of the issues is going to be as we move the sixth grade up, where do people who currently go to Crocker, if they want to be part, they already have a choice of going to the Comandantes, the dual language program. Will siblings follow siblings? So some of those decisions are going to be made at the school committee level, you know, on, on where specific, which specific school you might be in with some choices. We have already seen the school system. I'm on the finance committee and on the joint capital planning committee. And this year we are looking at a series of capital requests for Crocker. So Crocker is not being ignored in terms of their needs on renovations and upgrading on systems. Several have been submitted both for the playgrounds and internal to the building. So keeping Crocker um, up to date, but also renovated. 
And long term, if we were to need more space, Crocker would probably be a logical place to build it bigger, but that would require another building grant. So right now we're looking at, um, hopefully we will live five, 10 years for with this building, but Crocker is on the schedule for um, not being left behind in terms of its physical space and the quality of its space. So I was pleased to see several requests coming in this year and there's a queue, you know, what's next year and the year after. So it's part of the larger um, keeping our buildings up to the support of the education programs we have in them. Last call for questions. Any other questions? I should say Anna, Anna, is, Anna is also on that joint capital committee. So she's a, she's going to be someone who can answer these questions as well about the schools. Yeah. Anna, like the Disney princess, that's my Anna. Yes, I am. It's true. Not on the building committee, on joint capital. Yeah. Joint capital. Anna, sorry, go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I, uh, I had a question about, uh, well, when I was just, uh, I just want people to know that March 9th is another public forum that you all can attend. And uh, my question actually was that, uh, Kathy, you pointed out that March 8th, the school committee is voting um, and the forum is on March 9th. Is the, is the feedback or questions from the forum, are they feeding the school committee? So the, the school committee's vote is on the education program Plan. for the school. Right. And what, they're, what they've really done, there's an excellent document, the draft document. So it's, it's building on the programs they're already offering and considering what is this new space makes possible. Mm -hmm. So this is not starting from scratch. We have a really right. solid education program. So some of the feedback we've been getting at the forums is more about what is the building look like, not what mm -hmm. is the program inside the program. So to give you an example is using the outdoors as a learning space, not just for play, but how do we start to say we're going to teach? How do we use the building to teach itself? Mm -hmm. If we have a net zero mm -hmm. building with young kids coming up, learn how the building operates. So the building committee follows that of several days later. So what the community forum will see, there are not decisions being made yet on where the building's going to be, how much it's going to cost. So what the community forum will hear is what our choices are with lots of, you know, our, mm -hmm. is it going to be two stories or three stories? How, how will you worry about the traffic? None of those will be answered in this preliminary design phase. Mm -hmm. They were going to be answered in June. So all input that people come mm -hmm. when they come to the community forum will be worth raising your hand and asking a question or offering a comment. Right. And actually, my question was around like are parents and teachers part of this uh, educational plan piece? Uh, yes, there what what you'll see, I'll do a, a more detailed summary, but we're also putting it up as part of the documents for the council meeting. Okay. The Denisco design team has held multiple visioning sessions, oh, external, no. but with parents, with teachers, with staff, mm -hmm. and into that has fed into the educational program. The next step is going to be on this. Okay, this is your program. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you want different things in the building? And what I've seen done in others involve kids. You know, if you think of designing your kitchen, where's the stove going to go? Where's the mm -hmm. library going to go? Where's the gym? And communities make these decisions with the designers saying, well, if you put it here, it has these consequences. And we're starting to see some of that. So the teachers will be very much involved as well parents on thinking through what is the building flow feel like. Um, and kids too, right, Kathy? They were doing and, some and work kid, with yeah, the- Absolutely, and, kid, and kids. You know, it's it's pretty exciting when you see um, the kids get involved with, um, you know, one, one, one person who's working with us, our, our owner's project manager, she saw one district that had, the teachers had the kids draw their vision of the building and where things would be and bring it home, bring it home to talk to their parents. So their parents would come to the next meeting when people were talking about this. So it is- there, there can be a larger engagement. And that's decision when I say we pick a place, a preferred from June into December, we'd be designing the building, we, the designer. So there is going to be a lot of opportunity to uh, participate to the extent you want to. Um, that's and, awesome. 
Thanks yeah. so much, Kathy. That's really exciting. Yeah. Thank so you. I do want to I do want to kind of make sure we're publicly thanking Kathy. I know this has been a this is a big lift, right? The committees are all slightly different, and and this one is a is a large lift. So and chairing it as well. Um, Kathy, we are so grateful to you and appreciate all of your work. And I'm sure you will hear from many of us <laughs> as we continue on. So thank you. And thank you for joining us. Um, well, as well. Thank you for doing this. And, and, you know, as we get further along, what we're hoping is we bring this out to districts too, so that you know what's coming up next and can figure out, uh, bring people in or let other people know what's happening. So thank, thank you for inviting thank me. You, thank you. So the next um, update that we have, Shani, do you want to um, do you want to share about this one? It's this Cress, or do you want me to? I'll share the screen. So, okay. Uh, so this is from this is uh, an update from Paul Bockelman about the Cress program. This is the community response program and the other recommendations from the community safety working group. So Crest specifically was the one that got a lot of the a lot of attention, and it's it's a big component of this. So we I know this is a lot of words. I'm going to read them. Don't worry. Uh, so the essence of it is that the the council last year um, in December, so prior to me, this was the the previous council approved the creation of the Department of Community Responders for Equity, Security, and Service. That's what Crest stands for. Um, and so now they're in the phase where they have an implementation team that's been making, meeting weekly to figure out now what, right? Like how to make this work, how to make this function. Um, there is impact bargaining on the establishment of the Crest program that's been initiated with the police and offered to the fire and SEIU unions. Um, and then the, in terms of staffing, they are advertising or they have advertised the position of the director for the program. Um, the interview team has re reviewed the applications and the final interviews are actually happening this week. So hopefully we will have a director for the Crest program uh, soon once that appointment is made and the town council um, reviews it. Once they are in place, they will be the ones who recruit the staff and um, hire them for this program. The space at the bank center, Banks Community Center has been designed and is being contracted out. So that's where this department will be um, functioning out of. And we are working on, um, I say we, Paul should, Paul, I did nothing to get them a vehicle, but uh, they, are, they are getting a vehicle to have available for when the program begins. Um, so it's, it's continuing to be in process there. The other, and again, interrupt me, because I'm going to keep rolling unless you interrupt me. So if you have questions, just jump in. The other recommendations coming out of the Community Safety Working Group, uh, the first was cr the creation of a diversity, equity, and inclusion department. And so the assistant DEI director started work on January 3rd. That is Miss Jennifer Moyston, who you may already be familiar with, and she is doing a phenomenal job. Um, we are so excited to, to have her. Um, I work in organization development, and so seeing us, you know, promoting from within and recognizing talent in our own organization is very exciting, uh, and, and she's doing a great job. So the DEI director position has been adver uh, advertised, and an interview team will be reviewing those applications and interviewing candidates in the coming weeks. Um, at that point, Paul will then interview the finalists and make an appointment that gets referred to the town council for review. So moving along there. The second recommendation was a community safety and social justice committee. And so um, the challenge here is that repeated recruitment efforts have not provided a large pool of interested applicants. So this is maybe a little bit of a hint and a nudge for those of you who might be interested in this particular area to consider applying for that committee. The interview team will be interviewing applicants during the first week of March. And Paul, that should say Paul, sorry, this is, I was in a rush. Uh, Paul anticipates making those appointments immediately after they've concluded those interviews and recommendations. So please, uh, you know, share the word on this one. This is a really important committee. Um, we, we'd love to see it robustly uh, applied for. And, you know, this is a deep value in our town. So I think it, it would be really great to see some more folks um, apply for that committee. The third recommendation um, regarded uh, adjustments to the Amherst Police Department. So um, there's a new dashboard up on the APD website, which makes it easier to find and download information collected by the police department. So uh, easier to access that. And um, now that our police accreditation process is complete, there'll be, uh, we'll be reviewing policies that CSWG uh, recommended to be reviewed. So they're going through back through those policies, um, looking them over. 
and seeing what might need to be adjusted there. And then the last, uh, the last thing that they're moving on is the police resident oversight board and the town manager is working to finalize that charge and then we'll recruit. So recruitment is not open for that yet, but they're finalizing the charge. So. Yeah, Nancy. Um, where are we in terms of commitments to buying electric cars, given the fact that you're providing a new car for Chris? So that's a really, oops, sorry, I wanted to stop sharing so we could see each other. It's a great question. Um, we do not currently, one of the, one of the things in the, um, in the climate action plan was a five-year vehicle, um, switching over to electric vehicles. To my knowledge, that has not been enacted and I'd love to see it be enacted because, uh, and Lynn, I'm looking to you to correct me if I'm incorrect, um, but I believe that, go ahead. Where it is appropriate and those cars or vehicles are efficient, we do buy them. I believe this year we've bought two police cars that way. But what we find is with some equipment, it's just not a feasible thing. The technology is not there. On the other hand, for example, we're in the process of purchasing a new uh, piece of fire equipment and it has a whole different idling system so that it's not sitting there and idling and spewing out yeah. fumes. Uh, so that to the extent that it's available and the technology has proven itself, we look to buy it when we buy. Nancy, this specific one though, um, I'm gonna look back because the J the Joint Capital Planning Committee does have a list of the vehicles that are currently in service and the proposals for the vehicles that we'd like to buy. I believe, I'm gonna speak so vaguely and I'd like to confirm this before you take it for fact. Um, I believe this one was listed as an electric vehicle, but I will, I will check that. Um, the, the vehicle plan that I'm talking about would be for, like Lynn said, the, the vehicles that are able and reasonable to purchase in an electric version. Um, and so it's a five-year plan to move us forward. So that's not an existing policy, but would be a great one to get on the books. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. So then the next um, area Did we just lose her? Yeah, we did. Oh. Um, why don't you take over, Shalini? Yeah, I can so continue. Comes back in. Mm -hmm. Sure. So the next update was about the Hickory Ridge. And so good news is that after four years of uh, the owners of that place uh, trying to get money, the smart money and solar money are finally getting it it's happening now finally and so apparently we're going to be closing uh in this week with them and so once that um the once that they get them solar money and whatever then we're able to close the deal then i believe that um they will be creating a plan uh dave zermak our assistant town manager is going to create a plan for community outreach and to figure out and to engage and figure out what we'd like to see happen um, in Hickory Ridge. Yeah. Yes, Martha. Uh, yes, uh, I, I'm really quite excited about the possibilities for Hickory Ridge. And I feel that it's really important right from the start, i.e. as soon as we have the closing and are getting mm -hmm. to work, to have an, an engaged community committee. Mm -hmm. You know, the same old, same mm -hmm. old, where we, you know, the staff makes the plan and then we do quote outreach after the plan is already in place. Uh, and I, I really think that here, you know, we need the community input, you know, people who have used Hickory Ridge, who have ideas for it. I think it's very exciting that it backs up to the apartment complexes on East Hadley Road. And I think it's very important that members who live there should be actively involved right from the start in suggesting mm -hmm. things. You know, would they like to have a, a playground for kids? Would they like to have some community gardens over at that end? What about a good path for walking to Crocker School so that then you can reduce your you know, fossil fuel transportation costs if, mm -hmm. if it really was a pleasant walking experience? You know, all these things I think really need to come in 
soon. And so I would hope that the, the town council could make a recommendation uh, to today Zomac to put in place a, uh, a community uh, mm -hmm. you know, working group of some kind, uh, you know, sooner rather than later. Thank you, Martha. That's, um, that really makes a lot of sense to me, at least. Mm -hmm. And John? Oh, John, you're muted. Okay, I agree with Martha. I did want to note, however, that uh, the town has put out a request for ideas about what should happen in Hickory Ridge on the Engage Amherst mm -hmm. part of the town website. And there have been, I don't know, maybe close to 100 uh, ideas that have come up. Uh, the most popular, I'll say, since I'm interested in this, is affordable housing. <laughs> but anybody who has an idea can certainly add it by going to the Engage Amherst website. Mm -hmm. But I would then question uh, the people who are um, living, say, in the East Hadley, uh, apartments and so on, do they actually actively go to the town website and use Engage Amherst or would there be a different means to reach out to them? Martha, there have been individual, oh, sorry, there have been meetings with um, uh, those those apartment complexes. Uh, oh, Dave Demick, yeah, Great. so th that outreach is is being done um, and will continue to be done because <clears throat> I know that your your point is a, a very good one and and has been on the minds of the folks who are uh in the planning department um who are doing this okay. thank you Bernie? yeah i i believe that some of the cdbg money that we just got is going to go towards building a trail you it are correct apart, uh, apartment buildings out um and it's interesting um the uh, i do want to put a plug in for the Fort River yeah. and the importance of the Fort River ecologically. Um, it's also the longest undimmed tributary of the Connecticut River right now. And to point out to folks that there are lots of wetlands through mm -hmm. there um, <clears throat> that will be uh, require a lighter touch. So before yeah. folks get to um, uh, you know spreading the asphalt and pouring the concrete, um, you, you, we really need to do, and I, I, I guess there's been a considerable amount of work done because Dave Zomack's very careful about this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm a Dave Zomack fan. If <laughs> um, the, um, uh, you know, so there's, there, there's some significant constraints on the property. Yes. Uh, that we need to take into account and we do need to preserve and protect the Fort River and um, maybe even turn it back into a reasonable trout stream again. Who knows? You are not the only person to uh, be interested in the fishing potential of the Fort River. Um, I, I know that for, for a fact. Yeah, so Bernie, I want to I want to talk a little bit. Hickory Ridge is, some, is uh, an area I'm so excited about this project. It did come before us when I was prior to council when I was on the Conservation Commission um, when we were putting the solar array or permitting the solar array. And you are correct that um, there the wetlands are considerable. As with most places in Amherst, the wetlands are considerable, right? I'm pretty sure you can't walk 100 feet without hitting a wetland uh, in this town. So we are, um, any trails, any permanent trails will require permitting that goes through the Conservation Commission. For those of you who have not had the pleasure of going to one of their meetings, part, probably because it's at this time, uh, they are incredibly fastidious and uh, cautious and careful about protecting our natural resources. Um, we have a phenomenal wetlands administrator. And so know that that is front of mind. I also believe specifically about the Fort River that there's, um, and I, I may, again, this is pencil, uh, the Fort River Watershed Group um, is paying close attention to this project because it's a potential area for restoration of the Fort River. Yeah, I'm, I'm part of that Fort River oh, Group. Good. Great. Good. See? So I so was I was I right that you all are keeping an eye on it? Okay, good, great. And I, I think it's the area where the the existing building is. That's where the potential is for some kind of um, building or in the parking area and so forth over there. Yeah, the front. And yeah, and one thing, and we got a couple of ideas around the community theater. That was a, also of great interest to people that using the existing building. 
although we've been told that it's in a really bad shape, but that's one of the ideas that's come up um, from a couple of people is to use that space for a community theater. So um, the current status, you are correct. We did get community development block grant CDBG. Uh, yep, uh, money to help us with Hickory Ridge. Um, that was a recent announcement that's very exciting. And the town staff are continuing to do that targeted outreach to folks that are adjacent, as well as um, the apartment complex owners and managers to the north of the, of the property. They're also looking at trails um, and, and doing that due diligence associated with the funds from CDBG. Uh, so this is just a quick note. Um, Dave is planning on, Dave Zomek, who's our assistant town manager, is, is heading up this project. And he is, for those who don't want to read this long quote, he is planning on doing more community engagement work uh, for the public. So this is going to build off of what was on Engage Amherst. So that is a great um, jumping off point. But the focus is getting more people who live near the property involved in the planning, more targeted discussions with the recreation department, the housing trust, and representatives of the arts community in Amherst, among many others. So he's he's definitely casting a wide net to make sure that we're hearing all of the voices that we possibly can hear from with this project. And Martha, to to, uh, to build on your idea, maybe the you they could be so. There's already a South Amherst committee. I forget what it's called. There is an association, right? The South Amherst. Association of Neighbors. Oops. Which uh, one? It's. Um, does anyone know what I'm talking about? What is there it is called? a District Five. There's a District Five Neighborhood Committee. Yeah, and uh, so but the apartment complexes are, I think, a little bit south of where District Five is. I'm not sure. Yeah. So the redistricting. Oh yeah, it, the Patrick, redistricting is not going to include. That's true. But that aside, I, what I was going to suggest is that, Martha, maybe you and other residents, and we already have a neighborhood, South Amherst Neighborhood Association, if they want to organize themselves and do the outreach and then collect the information uh, that could be shared with Dave Zemak and with us at a district meeting or directly with Dave Zemak, but it doesn't like we don't have to have an official committee for you to do the outreach is what I'm saying. We could do that outreach, use the neighborhood association to do the outreach in the way you want to do it, and then share that information with, with us. And So may I jump in just quickly? Yes. yes. Uh, there is, prior to our district configurations, uh, there is a very loosely, but <laughs> um, a, a well-heeled Orchard Valley neighborhood and friends and um i happen to have been uh, in charge of that for about the past 10 years and we embark upon neighborhood issues down here Do dave zomek knows very well about us so uh district five there is an association but please know that orchard valley are mm -hmm. 200 and plus homes down here we are active we're engaged and we are very diverse neighborhood of mm -hmm. uh, singles of families and um, we're listening we're very in involved and engaged in especially the hickory ridge issue mm -hmm. great so uh next up in my little slide deck is just upcoming council decisions and votes and discussions that are coming up we wanted to just make sure you were aware of so Kathy mentioned this on the 28th at 5.30, we have a special meeting. Um, so typically our meetings start at 6.30, but we're starting early to um, discuss the elementary school building project. And that's, yep, 5.30. Um, on the 28th, during the normal meeting, we will be having our final, dis our second reading and vote on the temporary moratorium on solar, on permitting of large scale solar projects. Um, at that meeting, we will also have a couple of, um, what are called poll hearings, just because this was new to me, I'm going to let you know, uh, because, uh, no, sorry, not the 28th, later on, Lynn, go ahead. Am I wrong? What, You're doing what? great, not the 28th for poll sorry. hearings. I, that's why I didn't put a date next to it in my slide deck, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, coming up, the other ones that are, are TBD, TB dated. Uh, so poll hearings. So just so you know, anytime that Eversource needs to put in a new uh, electric poll in the public way, um, they need to come to the council to get that approved so, because the council is the keeper of the public way. This does not apply to every telephone poll. 
Um, so these are thrilling, thrilling discussions that we uh, engage in. And then um, also coming before us are the updated flood maps. So updated floodplain um, that happens every 10 years, I believe. And so we have hit the mark there and we get to look at maps, which is very fun for me. Um, also two things that are going to be coming forward. Uh, TSO has been working on uh, new parking permit fees. And so we, uh, this is not parking meters. This is not, this is like you get a, you probably doesn't apply to anybody in this space, but you live close enough to downtown that you can get a parking permit um, to park in designated areas downtown. And so we're looking at the fee structure for those. Um, that is one way to support our um, parking funds, enterprise funds for parking. Um, and the other thing that's coming down the down the pike as well is potentially looking at the fees as well for rental registrations um, and examining those and seeing if they are what they need to be for uh, just the fee structure around rental registrations. So those are a couple things. I'm sure we will do many more things than that, but those are a couple things that are uh, on the on the docket in the next couple of weeks for us. Um, and then the last thing we wanted to just go over are the ways to engage in some current initiatives that aren't necessarily council related that you might want to know about. I'm not gonna leave the meeting this time. I'm gonna click share. There we go. So uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's been like two and a half years. I work remotely pretty much full time and yet it still happens. So uh, two, two great ways to get engaged. These are not the only two ways, but wanted to just highlight them. Sorry, these are so pixelated. Uh, the Town of Amherst web page, website is a really great starting point for finding meeting dates, finding agendas and, and packets. So all the documents that are going to be used in a meeting um, and that's amherstma.gov. Uh, on that homepage, you can see the calendar of events. You can click on the, um, click on the one you're interested in. Um, you can also see committee committees that are, uh, have vacancies that you might consider applying for. And the other one that was referenced earlier is Engage Amherst, and that is a website dedicated to gathering input on current projects and initiatives, and that is engageamherst.org. So highly recommend both of these. Um, I will say, you know, Engage Amherst, I was even surprised. Uh, I thought it was great when it launched, and I looked at it, and I was like, I wonder if they're really reading it, you know, and when you look at it, they respond to almost every question. They are truly on that web page, looking at it and taking it um, very seriously. So please, you know, consider using that as, as one way to give feedback. Um, Shalini, anything to add to these two? All right, so then three I, really- Yeah, I guess uh, I would just uh, have put it out to people if they have any questions, any struggles, like we're always looking to improve our website. And I hear from people sometimes that it's hard to navigate. So if uh, what have you liked about or enjoyed about the website? And what are some difficulties you might have in finding things? So any comments about that? And if there aren't, that's good news. No, no news is good news, I guess. Um, so if, if it comes to you, interrupt me. Um, so three quick things I wanted to just point your attention to tomorrow, Thursday. Yep. Tomorrow's Thursday, the 24th, uh, West Pomeroy lane is going to be closed between West street and Farmington road between 7am and 3pm. So just a friendly FYI in case you're in the area. Uh, the other, a couple other things. So the livable Amherst community survey, this is supporting some, some really serious and exciting efforts to help make Amherst a more age and dementia friendly community. If you have not received that survey and would like it, um, please reach out and we'll make sure to send it to you. Uh, it's, it's really important to, uh, I believe it's targeted at folks who are, who are seniors um, and it helps us to improve the services and, and other things that we've got um, to move towards being classified an age and dementia friendly community. Uh, and then the last thing, this is, I, for those who don't know, I'm decently competitive. Um, we have a walking challenging, challenge happen, happening right now and we are losing to Amherst, New York. Uh, so please, if you are a walker, a runner, even just a plotter, um, you can enter your, enter your miles uh, in, this, in this walking challenge. It's an honor system. Uh, and 
my dog has yeah. been getting much longer walks. I'm going to tell you in one second because it's not in front of me, but it is on the town okay. webpage. If you go Every to the town webs, and till when is this on? Because I've been I'm trying to remember a lot, and I haven't entered it. Okay. I mean, you can enter them retroactively. I think. I know. I know. So, I know. Right. <laughs> Um, I believe it's through the month of February. So we only have a couple days left, but Ooh. we're, we're close. We're close. Oh my so God. we got to, all right, uh, everyone yeah. get on the website and please yep. put in your miles walked. <laughs> it's fun. I used to live close to Amherst, New York when I was in college and for a couple of years after. So mm -hmm. I've got, I've got, this is personal. All right. Um, and so lastly, uh, just as a reminder, you know, I know Shalini and I both have Facebook pages that you can follow for regular updates. Um, if you are do not think you're on our mail email list and would like to be or would like to confirm, um, please, please reach out. And then lastly, just as a reminder of how to reach the council, there are two ways. Um, you can just email towncouncil at amherstma.gov. And the even better way is to visit the public comment form, which is online. Um, when you fill out a public comment via that form, it automatically is added to the public comment record um, as well as emailed to all of us. So just know that those are two really great ways to, um, to reach out. I'm done. So now we're gonna just open up the floor. We'd love to hear from you all about what's on your minds, what you wanna talk about, questions you might have, et cetera, and yeah. Bernie. Yeah, turn my mics on. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. The Amherst, New York has Duff's wings. That must. You know, probably, I, I get that probably that. slows them down some, you know? Yeah, you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's nothing. I, it's not the anchor bar, but what, what can I, right. <laughs> um, I just want to put in a plug for town hall staff. Yes. Um, uh, you know, I have. The public service jobs in town tend to be a tad more complicated than they appear, and at times they can be crashingly dull. And, um, you know, and, and people come in with all kinds of agendas and make all kinds of phone calls. And I, I think the staff in town hall, the, um, the, and the crew up in planning and conservation, those, those folks, um, uh, the folks in finance, the town clerk's uh, crew, they all work very hard. They're all very personable, at least in my experience. And uh, I think we, uh, uh, I would just like to call the attention of the counselors um, that, you know, they get kudos from me. And I'm going to throw in the library staff as well. Um, I've, uh, uh, you know, benefited, I, my grandkids have benefited greatly from all the good work that the folks at the Jones do as well. So um, they're, uh, uh, we, we've got a good crew of people working for us and I think they need to be acknowledged. I completely agree. Um, I would love to follow that up. Yeah, with, if you have any ideas for right. how you'd love to see us acknowledge them, please let, I mean, you know, I can say thank you till I'm blue in the face and I'd love to, I, I'm fully with you that we are incredibly lucky to have the town staff that we have. They're phenomenal. I think one idea is just, we can be nicer, you know, even when we are, um, um, disappointed or frustrated, just remembering that the town staff is working really hard and is stretched out so thin and uh, just be nice. Yeah. And I think we can do more. So if you have other ideas, <laughs> please. It's, good, it's a great starting place though. I love it. Mm. Yeah. Adrian. Thank you, Bernie. Yeah. Thank you, Bernie. I'm sure Bernie would have also extended it to our town councilors uh, with your long <laughs> meetings uh, on the council and then to extend it to us. I think these district meetings are so very important. Let me jump to uh, my point, something that I wrote to Shalini and Anna about the districting advisory committee. Uh, you know, we're coming into the midterms and I see my good friend Mindy, our terrific representative, who helped push through the Massachusetts Votes Act. So my point is this, that we are redistricted in the town, excuse me, and come November, we might have new precincts, we may not, but I think it's not too early to start reminding the town and getting out publicity that we've got the State Votes Act that is coming online, as well as our new precincts and new districting. And it takes a long time with lots of rep, uh, repetition mm -hmm. to let our residents and our citizen 
citizen voters know that there are changes coming. So please put that on your agenda for uh, for meetings coming up. And um, uh, thanks to our counselors. Thanks, Mindy, for pushing through that terrific votes act. I know we didn't get it all, uh, but maybe next time. Oh yeah. That, maybe you want to say a couple of that. things about the votes act, Mindy. Um, yeah, maybe I'm happy to if people would like to hear, but I don't want to commandeer this. So. Is that all right, Anna and please? Sean? And after Mindy, we'll have Lynn uh, give us the redistricting stuff. So Mindy, please go ahead. Thank you, Adrian. So the Votes Act was the major votes legislation that was passed in the House about I think two weeks ago now. Um, it's not done yet because the House version and the Senate version are different, and they have to go to a conference before they can actually go to the governor for a signature. But that bill does a couple of things. The things that we agree on as a House and Senate is that mail-in voting will continue, um, early voting will continue, there's a shorter registration period, um, it's been cut to 10 days, um, people will still be able to use drop boxes and collection boxes. The, the aspect that was not agreed to, unfortunately, was election day registration and same day registration, and those are different. So same day registration is anytime there's an election day, um, so even during early voting, people can register to vote at the time that they're going to vote. And election day registration does the same thing for the voter, except it's only on election day. So it would only be on like September 6th, which is the primary or November something, which is the general election. Um, in the Senate, they have same day registration in their bill. In the House, despite um, a really good fight and, um, not a unanimous vote, which is unusual for the House, um, we lost an effort to try to get election day registration. Um, but there's still the conference committee, so a lot of us are holding out hope that maybe the compromise in the conference committee will be election day registration. The quasi good news, and I hope this isn't too much in the weeds, is that even though we didn't pass an official election day registration or same day registration, because the registration period has been shortened and the early voting period has been extended, it means that right now, even with no other changes, there'll be a couple of days every election cycle that will actually be able to have same day registration because those days overlap. Um, so that's not ideal. We had that last year. I don't know if you remember that there was a couple, there was like one day, I think, where we had same day registration in Amherst. You know, guess what? The earth didn't stop rotating. So that was a good thing. Um, so we know that it can be done. <laughs> and we know that incumbents actually can get reelected that way. So people were concerned about that. I personally am not, I don't think incumbent um, advantage should ever be considered when we're thinking about voting. It should only be about voter access, um, but we'll see. So hopefully we'll, we'll have election day registration, obviously in a town like Amherst, where about 20,000 of my constituents are students who move in on Labor Day weekend and the primary is set the day after Labor Day. Um, election day registration is kind of important um, to make sure that those students have the um, ability to vote. So we'll see. But unfortunately, Adrian, it's not over yet. It has to go to a conference committee and then the governor has to sign it. So more to come. Eternal optimist. Thank you, Mindy. I know you'll help push it. Yeah. Thank you, Adrian. Thank, thank you so much for your advocacy and your work on that. Um, Lynn, would you like to give us a brief update up to Adrian's point? And I know we had talked about this before the meeting around sure. redistricting. So we had a phenomenal redistricting committee. They, I, I just can't say enough about them. They really, really did their job in a shortened period of time. Uh, our redistricting map has been approved. Uh, the Secretary of State's office is now verifying literally which street addresses are actually in which precincts. And your precincts will now be District 1A and District 1B and District 2A and District 2B. Uh, and there will be some, uh, there is definitely some realignment as to where you will vote. Once the um, all the addresses are verified, the town clerk will come to the town council with a proposal uh, as to where the voting places will be, and they will be dispersed throughout town. We will not go through that problem we had a couple of years ago. 
And uh, the, I am hoping that sometime in April or May at the latest. And then there'll be a lot of uh, resident uh, education and information. Uh, just on another note, ranked choice voting would not apply to this coming election anyway. And we're still working with Mindy and Joe on getting that through. It was carried over from the last uh, session. And uh, I also wanna just give a shout out to Mindy and Joe. Uh, they have been amazing along with our town staff in helping bring money to Amherst, just amazing. So thank you so much. Thank you, Lynn, that's really kind of you. But can I also say it's a hat tip to the town staff. And also I want to publicly acknowledge the work of Claudia Pasmani at the chamber and Gabrielle Gould at the bid and their downtown Amherst Foundation for bringing in lots of money for small businesses in Amherst, really exceptional. Um, but thank you for crediting me. I, I don't really deserve it, but the people who are in town definitely do. Credit's not pie, we can just keep giving it out, it's okay. Uh, so future meetings and then truly, truly, I promise it's an open floor. Um, we do have some, some dates for you to mark your calendars for future District 5 meetings. So, um, I believe, Shalini, we're still talking seven. Is that true? Okay. So March 31st, April 28th, May 26th, and June 23rd, unless Andy is about to tell me why one of those does not work. Andy. <laughs> no, that's not what I was. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. I was like, Go oh, on. no, I overscheduled something. Okay. Or Shalini. I think Shalini picked these. Thank you for doing that. Go ahead, Andy. Yeah, I just wanted to do uh, two quick things. One is to thank uh, Anna and Chalini for including me in the meeting. As uh, historically um, invited, they've in, they've invited the at-large uh, counselors. Um, I think I'm the only one who's on this particular meeting, but. Um, I try and attend all of the district meetings because even though I don't participate the way the district counselors do, it gives me a great opportunity to hear from all of you and uh, really get a feeling for what the issues are around town and actually find as a, an at-large um, counselor that I spend a lot of time at it because I try and go to meetings in all of the uh, districts. So. Uh, well, I'm not organizing the meetings, I'm attending more meetings. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that the budget process is underway. Um, right now, the town manager is developing a proposed budget that um, will be presented on May 2nd, I believe, whatever the first Monday is, but I think it is the second. And uh, then uh, we will be, um, it will go to the finance committee and there will be a forum about the budget so that I would encourage you to take a look at the budget when it comes out for whatever interests and programs you have. Um, it is always a very tight process in Amherst about budgets. And I think that it's gonna be even more difficult in um, the next few years because we've created um, several new programs, um, ECAC and at the, uh, rec the recommendations of the Community Safety Working Group in particular. And those are additional to programs that already exist um, so that the demands on the budget are growing faster than the budget itself is growing on the revenue side and is going to pose great challenges that we're all gonna to have to make difficult decisions about and uh, getting um, input from the community is always helpful and important. Uh, Amherst faces a forever challenge because we have a tremendous amount of land that is not taxable either because it's uh, owned by a university or college or it's conservation land um, and uh, as a consequence, uh, and we have a very small business district compared to many communities, which puts a lot of burden on homeowners who, um, and uh, property that is residential. 
which is uh, makes us very cautious about wanting to ask for any operating budget override. So there are difficult choices that are going to have to be made first by the town manager and then considered by the council within the restrictions of the uh, charter. So I just wanted to uh, uh, touch base a little bit on finances, the uh, forever chair of the finance committee uh, to um, point that out. And I wanted to also recognize that we have some uh, really great resident members, one who's on this call, and that's Bernie Kubiak, uh, who have uh, really contributed a lot. The charter provides a special um, situation for the finance committee to include resident members of the committee. Um, and uh, they are really uh, tremendous resource, tremendous contributors to the committee's work. So Bernie, thank you. So that was all I wanted to say. Thank you, Andy. Anything else folks wanna talk about uh, or, or ask tonight? All right. Yeah, while well, we're waiting for people to think up and give them a little space to figure out if there's something you want to share, I just want to give a shout out to some of the new restaurants that have start, uh, launched uh, or started downtown. So please go and visit our and try out, even if you're not going into restaurants, maybe you can do a takeout. Uh, so we have Rice Delicious. There is Garcia's, Mexicalitos, Hazel's is a new one that's open where Litz used to be. Um, and uh, and the last thing is the Drake, which is, uh, does everyone here know about Drake? Anyone who doesn't know? So Drake is a new performance center we're gonna be having right in our downtown with live music or stand-up comedy. And I already know actually Dr. Kate Atkinson, who many of us know, her son is a performer in Boston. And so he might be getting people from Boston. So it'd be like so cool to have our own kids grown up and performers to come and showcase their work there. And how they have done a phenomenal jo a job. They are just short by $50,000 now. So if anyone wants to uh, offer, it doesn't matter how big or small, but if you want to offer a donation, uh, to get Drake started in time, please uh, go to the website and make that donation. I do want to say I was thrilled that I was able to get an earmark for the Drake as part of economic development in the ARPA funds. Um, because, you know, the ARPA funds were all about post COVID recovery. And so there were lots of different ways of looking at that. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, $50,000 short makes me think I better call up Gabrielle because we're coming into budget season at the, in the state house. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you so much. Yeah, and there's another, uh, I just shared it today on Facebook. Uh, if anyone has a small business here, please let people know that they, uh, the state has just opened up. Uh, I think we got an email from Joe Comerford saying that there is uh, new grants that are being offered to small businesses. So please spread the word if you know any small business uh, and that they that can benefit from this grant. Well, we're happy to stick around for a couple minutes if folks do have questions. Otherwise, thank you so much. Um, hopefully, we'll see you March 31st at 7 if we don't see you sooner at the meeting. Thank you all. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank Good night. You. Thank, you. thank you all. Good to see you. And thank, thank you, you so much, everyone. Thank you, Mindy. Thank you, Anna, Lynn, Andy, Mindy, all thank of you. you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you, Adrian. <laughs> Thank you, town council. <laughs> All right. Oh, big hugs. <laughs>